Hey guys, so this is a bit different than what I normally do, but uh, Kelsey and I are currently at her mother's house and her shower is leaking, like constantly. And not only is it leaking, but it's leaking hot water. So not only is she having to pay, you know, more of a higher water bill, but she's also having to pay the electricity for the hot water that's coming out. So um, I decided I'm going to do a little uh, treat for her today and uh, fix it while she's at work. So I figured um, some other people may have had, may have the same issue. So I'm just gonna make a video on how to fix a Delta 1300 faucet cartridge, shower cartridge, whatever you call it. First things first, make sure you get the right part because I didn't. So first I ordered a part for uh, the 17 series um, and that was not correct. And I didn't even notice until I had the thing apart and was trying to install it. And I was like, this isn't what, like this doesn't look the same. <laughs> anyway, make sure you get the right part. So if you're looking for the Delta 1300 series, it should look something like this. You know, white with uh, these blue things here on the end that lets the water through. Um, I think this also works for the uh, 1400 series as well, but you know, don't hold me to that. I'm not replacing a 1400 series, I'm replacing a 1300 series, but I think this is the same one that you would need for that. And I think the process is pretty similar as well. So let's uh, get started on taking the old shower apart. So while I'm thinking of it, the first thing that's most important to do probably is make sure you turn the water off to the rest of, to, to the, either to the bathroom if you have that option. If you don't have that option, turn it off to the house. Uh, so that way you don't absolutely spray yourself with water when you take this thing apart because you will if you don't do that. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take this little cap right here. We wanna take that out. If you look really closely, there's a little hole right there and there's a little hole right here. I don't know if you can see it on this camera or not, but you just wanna take a small little screwdriver or a little flat edge or something small and you can get it down that little groove and just kind of prise it up like that. You can start to see it kind of coming out. And then go around the other side and do the same, just a little bit right there. And then you should be able to just grab it and kind of pull it out like that, see? So you wanna make sure you set this over to the side. Next thing you wanna do is we wanna take this screw right here out, okay? So that is a Phillips. Let me uh, set the camera down while I get that screw out. All right, so this screw is not out. If you notice, it's actually not a very long screw. So be very careful when you're taking this out of here. I've heard some horror stories of people <laughs> that drop the screw and it goes down the drain and yeah, you've lost it. So. Just make sure you're very careful and you don't drop that screw when you're taking it out of the, uh, the shower knob there, all right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is, well, pull this off. And this should just pull pretty much straight out. You might have to wiggle it just a little bit. It comes right off like that. So set this over to the side. And here is the shower cartridge uh, inside the valve head here. So next thing we're gonna do is we already broke the cylinder caulking or whatever was around this plate and right here. So I'm gonna take this plate off by taking this screw right here out and this screw right here out. And this will just slide right off. So let me do that real quick. All right, so the screws are out of both of those holes. And if you look, these screws are quite a bit longer than the other screws. So you don't have to worry too much about them falling down the drain if you drop them. But still make sure you hold on to these and don't lose them. Uh, let me set these off to the side and we'll get that plate off. All right, screws are out of the way. So now you just want to grab this plate and it should pull straight off like that. So you may see uh, like the line of where the caulking was before right around through here. Uh, it's pretty flush, but uh, what you can do is you can take a uh, like a little razor or something and scrape that clean if you want and then clean it up real good. And then when you put the plate back on, you can actually re-caulk it if you want to. Uh, I would suggest doing that. I'm not gonna do that today because I am out of caulking right now, but I'm going to run to the hardware store this evening probably and re-caulk it after I get it put back together. So anyway, here's the plate. That's what it looks like. Uh, just set that off to the side for now. Oh, one quick thing. If you don't know what series of Delta faucet you have, which I didn't at first, if you look on the bottom of the plate right here, See where it says 1300 series? That is how I knew that this was a Delta 1300 series. 
So if you're curious, check out this part of the plate and see what it says. See if it says 1300 series. Make sure you have the right part before you continue because like I said, I did not, so. All right, up next, uh, we have this little silver, like kind of sleeve plate looking thing and we have this little bonnet. And a lot of times if you read up on this, they'll say it's a brass bonnet. Uh, this looks like kind of chrome on the outside here. And also a lot of the times you'll see the sleeve up front and the bonnet behind it. Uh, so it, in this case, the bonnet's in front and the sleeve's behind it. So I don't know if this is uh, a variance that you normally see or if they changed it between the 1300 and the 1400 series or what, but for this 1300 series, uh, this, bon uh, this bonnet that you unscrew is right up front. So you grab it with your hand and give it a twist. It should twist off. You don't want to use like a if you can if you can help it you don't want to use tools on this because you don't want to use like channel lock or something because this is very delicate i've heard uh, people take like a washcloth and help them get you know maybe a wet a little bit of a damp washcloth and get a grip on it or something but if you can at all avoid it do not use tools on this section of the disassembly so here's the bonnet and it looks like a i don't know like a zinc or nickel or something it doesn't look brass to me but Anyway, a little bonnet that you unscrew and set that off to the side. Don't lose it. It's very important. And then you have this little sleeve that should just pull right out like that. Just like that. And I don't see any O-rings or any kind of uh, sealants or anything inside of this. So you should be good. Uh, unless, you know, I lost it. <laughs> but I don't see anything. I think, I think this O-ring right here will do the job of what, of what I was thinking of. So yeah, sleeve, set it off to the side. Now comes the trickier part. So this right here is the cartridge all the way back to uh, about right here. If you can see that little indention, little carrot looking thing, from there back is the cartridge that we're gonna be replacing. And if you look at our replacement, it looks similar, right? You got that, and you got these little, like I said, these little carrot things right here. If you look in here, you can see right here, the little carrot things. So this is what we're going to be pulling out and putting a new one back in for, all right? All right, guys, so the first thing is you see this top cap right here. So what this is is a, uh, uh, it's like a temperature limit stop or something like that. I don't know. It, basically what it does is when you turn this, this plastic hits this plastic down here and it prevents you from turning it any further and scolding yourself. And you can actually set this at different degrees on how hot you want your water to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this off and get this out of the way and you can just, you know, pull this right off. You might have to squeeze a little bit and turn it, but it'll slide right off like that. All right, so we can set this over to the side and we shouldn't need to worry about that when we put this one back in because if you look closely here, you can see there's a hotter and colder and then you pull this gray thing up and you can twist it to adjust the hot and cold. So it's kind of built into this uh, replacement valve. So I don't think that we will be needing this in the future, but I'm gonna hold on to it just in case uh, until we get finished and then I'll throw it away. So the next part is actually taking this entire cylinder out right here, this whole white part, like I said before. Uh, so I've clamped on some vice grips onto the end of it here, into this nozzle, to give me some leverage because this thing does not want to come out <laughs> very easily, unfortunately. Um, so you may have to do some like, you know, twisting up and down, kind of loosen it up a little bit and pull on it. Um, so don't be too afraid about it not wanting to come out. This is natural and unfortunately with my situation where she had a lot of hard water that kind of, uh, you know, that calcium deposit on here, it's really stuck in there. So you may be able to just do this with your hand, you know, like grabbing it and kind of wiggling it and, you know, for a minute or so, and then it'll eventually come out. Um, I have not had that luck. So I'm moving on to some uh, vice grips. So let me wiggle on it a little bit more and uh, I'll bring you guys back. All right, that was, um, this is actually only like five seconds later, <laughs> but uh, I started pulling on it and it's, as you can see, it's starting to come out. You see right here, this used to be all the way in there. So I'm just wiggling on it, trying to get this to work its way out. And it looks like, yeah, there it comes. All right. So 
here's the cartridge. Uh, if you notice, it looks like our our replacement cartridge, pretty much. Look at that. See? So, one of the big things to note is you need to make sure that you have the correct uh, side for the hot water. Uh, this is important because if not, you'll have your hot and cold uh, flip-flopped. All right, we got a cartridge here, a new cartridge. And remember, I was telling you that the hot water is usually the left side of the faucet. So I need to figure out which one of these is hot and which one's cold. And luckily, if you, <laughs> if you look on this little uh, white area right here, there's a big H right here, which tends to make me believe this is the hot side. Also, it says hot side right here and right here on top of this H. And you notice there's a little carrot right here, right? Remember these little uh, carrot type indentions right here? So I'm guessing that this H with a carrot is gonna go right here on the left side of this. So uh, the important thing is also make sure you don't take this off, right? If you're just replacing the uh, cartridge, you wanna leave this tube intact. So I just thought I'd mention that real quick. <laughs> but anyway, so the side that has the H is gonna go on the left. And so we just take that and you see those holes back in there that these go into. Just try to, you know, line it up if you can. So let's see, slide this back in here. It's a bit of a tight fit, so you might have to give it, you know, a little bit of oomph to get it in there, but that's good. You, especially with things that are, you know, involve water and you want it to have a good seal. So, and make sure this, oh yeah, make sure this O-ring is in place here, because if not, you'll have water leaking out. So just slide this straight back into those holes with the H on this side, just like that. So you can see here, this carrot matches up with this indention and same for over here. And you can see the H is on the left side. So hopefully now, whenever I end up turning this, it will go like it's supposed to, hot to the left. Um, so next thing we want to do is put this sleeve back on that we took off originally. Yeah, like that. So that slides right back in there. Like that. All right, so that just slides right on there. And then you see the grooves right here. You will take this little bonnet that we took off and put it on here. And make sure, like I said before, you don't want to use tools. Make sure you just hand tighten this, all right? So, you know, just get seated on the thread right there. There it goes. And you just want to hand tighten this. And next, you know, we'll put this uh, plate back on. So that just slides right over top of all of that right there. And like I said before, you know, uh, later tonight, I'm probably going to go get some caulk and, uh, or some kind of sealant, maybe clear or white. And I'm going to go around this and just give it a protective uh, seal. So that way, you know, no moisture or water can get in there and do any damage. And this had it on here as well. That's not very common, but um, I might go ahead and just put it back on there since it had it uh, when I took it off. But yeah, so next thing that we need to do is simply put the screws back in. And they go back in these holes right here and right here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this head back on and it's got a slot in there that only lets it go on one particular way. Um, so you just slide it onto this little brass thing here and twist it until you find the groove and there it is. Slide right on there. All right, and then you just put this screw back in that hole. As I said before, make sure you do not drop this screw if you can possibly not do that because it will potentially go down your drain. And then you'll be fishing for a screw on top of this. And I'm sure nobody wants to be doing that. And then we take this little cap that we had, you know, uh, that we took off earlier. Make sure that the hot is on the left and the blue is on the right, just so it's you know, accurate. Thread that right back on there and you just push it on. There we go. Good as new, right? All right. Next time we go, and I'm gonna turn the water back on in the basement. We'll come back up here and hopefully there's no water damage coming out of the walls. Turn the water back onto the house here and we'll go back upstairs and make sure that nothing is being too badly damaged. All right. All right guys, so you turn the water on. Oh look, we have water. That's awesome. The, uh, oh, and the shower just drizzled on me, thank you. You remember how I said most 
uh, hot pipes are on the left side. Well, it turns out that ours was on the right side. So when you barely turn it on and it's supposed to be cold, it's actually hot. So like right here, that's hot water. Ow. Yeah. And if you turn it all the way, that's actually cold water. So I have my hot and my cold mixed up right now. So my hot water just happened to be on this side, which is not likely or common, but that's just how it rolled with me. All right, guys. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna go through the thing of videotaping me pulling it out and flipping it around. All I'm gonna do is literally pull it out, turn it around and put it right back in. Uh, you guys saw how to put the cartridge in and uh, just remember, don't force it. Put it in until it, as far as it'll go, as long as it's lined up with those holes and then screw that bonnet on and it'll secure it. Um, if you do have a leak, you know, maybe unseat it and put it back in again. Make sure all the o make sure all the O-rings are, you know, in their place. And, uh, yeah, I think you guys should be able to handle that pretty easily. Uh, I know this is not usually uh, the kind of videos that I do or Kelsey does. Um, if you're new to seeing us, we're normally a vlog channel. And, uh, yeah, uh, we've been to some pretty cool places and done some pretty interesting things, I think, at least. Uh, so if you want to check us out, feel free. Um... But if not, just uh, let me know if you want me to do more videos like, you know, this kind of stuff because I actually enjoy doing things around the house and I do quite a bit of things normally. Um, but, you know, yeah, hopefully this helps. Uh, if it does, you know, give it a thumbs up, share it, you know, it may help somebody else. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions with anything that I went through or anything, just, uh, you know, leave a comment or uh, message me, whatever, uh, and I'll try to help you out. But... Hopefully this was detailed enough to show you guys how to fix, uh, you know, your problem. And this problem manifested as a constant leak. It was just like someone had the water on. Let me show you real quick. So it wasn't like a drip. It was like, probably like that. Like that's what this faucet was doing nonstop. Hopefully it helps you guys. And like I said, like it, share it, comment, you know, whatever you guys feel like you feel like you're up to doing. You know, but I'll catch you guys later and hopefully your, uh, your bathtub stop leaking on you. See you guys.